This is the fourth video in our series of working with a database in Delphi and today in this video we're going to focus on how do we find records. In the last video we were looking at how to find one particular record. In this we're going to take the situation where there could be multiple results or even zero results. So how can we filter the data to just what we are looking for and for that we're going to use a filter technique in Delphi. And so to use a filter, we're going to be using the ADO table again, like we have all throughout the series, the TBLCD. And there are two key components that we need, or methods that we need to work with, and that's the filter and filtered. Now, the filtered is just a true or false. That's basically when we switch the filter on or when we switch the filter off. And then the filter method is where we set a string that is going to be used to set the rule for our filter. So it's very much like changing a light bulb. If you were changing a light bulb, you first switch the filter, uh, switch the light bulb off, you then change the light bulb, and then you can switch the light bulb on. That's what we're going to be doing here. So the first step is we're going to switch the filter off. In case there are any other filters currently running, we're going to switch them off. And that's where we set filter to false. Then we're going to set a filter string, which will be the rule for that filter and it's very similar to what we would use in an if statement with the conditions there which we'll see now and then once we have set the filter string we switch the filter back on by setting the filtered method to true examples of filter strings that we could use for example replacement value is greater than equal to 150 that is saying we are looking for all the records in our database where the replacement value is greater than 150. So it's very similar to what you would have in an if statement criteria. If we were looking at a string criteria, we would need it to say the genre, the name of the field, and what its value must be. For example, equals rock. But take note that it needs quotes, and there's going to be a little trick that we're going to do for that when we get to the video. Um, and you can have multiple criteria. You can have an and in, for example, they say replacement value is greater than 200 and those records where genre is also equal to rock. So you can also use your ands and ors just like you would use in a, a criteria for an if statement or a conditional loop. Um, so you can use that. Those are the type of rules that you would place in your filter string. So let's get to a couple of examples. So here we've got our database that we've been working with. This is a whole series. Just a reminder, there is a data module. And on that data module, which is called DMCD, we have our ADO table, which we are going to connect to. So in this unit, we can access all of those components because right at the top of our unit, we have included the unit for that data module. So let's get into find records. So let's say we want to find all the records where the artist is Muse. Well, before we get there, let's try a, a, a one with replacement value. That's probably a better example to start off. Let's find all the records where the replacement value is greater than or equal to 180. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, we can ignore the input for now. We're going to go access the data module and we're going to access the table that is on that data module. And then we're going to set, first remember, we have to switch it off. So the filtered must be set to false. We first switch the filter off then we're going to set the filter string there's the filter string we're going to set it to a replacement value it must be exactly like it is in the database it must be spelled exactly the same way replacement value must be equal it must be like a question it must be we want it greater than or equal to 180. so that is my that's my filter string and then we're going to switch the filter on. So there we get filtered equals true. So it switches off, set the filter string, and then switch it on. Let's see what happens. So because this DB grid is connected to our ADO table, we should see the results in here. And as you can see, all of these are those that are 180 or more. You can see all of these records. So we only have access to those records that are 180 or more. So that's how the filter works. Now we're going to learn a couple of things that are not related to filters, but that's going to make our life a bit easier. You'll notice that we keep typing this a lot. And so what you can do, you can still do it this way, but you can also use the with um, option. So you can say with DMCD do, and then we put a begin and end. And what that will do 
end of width. What will that will do is wherever we have code like this, it will attach the DMCD in front of it. So we actually can stop having to refer to DMCD every time and we can just refer to TBLCD. In fact, you could say DMCD.TBLCD at the top there as well, but I like it like this so that I can avoid having to type DMCD all the time. Also so that I can say TBLCD dot and then I get access to those particular options. So you can use a width. Either way is correct. It's just this is a quicker way or makes you type less, especially when you're doing a lot of interactivity with the ADO table. So let's change these strings up again. Let's change it to any one that is greater than 150 and replacement value is less than equal to 180. Remember, you can't say and great less than equal to 180. You've got to write it like you would with an if statement and say replacement value again. If I've spelt that correctly, it should work. Let me say found records, and there you can see it's only the records that are 150 or 160 or 180 or 170. So there we go. So that works nicely for when we have numbers. The problem comes when we're dealing with text, like we said in the first example, I want to find all the CDs that were created by the artist Muse. Now, the thing is, we want our filtered string to say artist must equal to the word Muse, but remember Muse must be in quotes. But if I put quotes there, it messes up with the quotes for the filtered string, and this is a problem. So whenever we are dealing with strings, we actually have to break this up a bit. So I'm going to say artist equals, and then I want it to equal muse like that. But I want them to put quotes around muse. So for that to work, what we're going to do is going to say artist equals, and then the part that we want to put quotes around, we're going to use what's called the quoted string. That takes in any string and just puts quotes in for us, and then attaches, that's going to be attached to the artist equals to. So that way we get our double quotes around the word muse. So let's run it and see what it looks like now. So let's find records, and there you can see only the artist that was set by muse. Okay, just to show you, uh, if we take that away, you'll see it won't work because it thinks it's some sort of value that we're trying to trying to figure out. Tries to think that there's some value that must be in a variable called muse. It says, no, can't do it. So that's obviously a problem. So that's why we must use a quoted string around our strings whenever we use them in the filtered string. If we, for example, have an input, let's say I wanted to type in an artist name there and we must find all the records of the artist name. Well, because that is a string, we still need to put quotes around that string. So we still need to use the quote string. But now I can just put the variable name there, which is as long as that's of type string, it will take whatever value is inside that variable, put quotes around it, and then attach it to artist equals. So yeah, we can type in muse. And you see, we get the same results. Let's type in a different band. And there you can see all stained. And if we type in someone that doesn't exist, obviously there's no records that belong to that. So that's how we do a filter. You switch the filter off. You set your filtered string. Remember, you can set it like in any if statement, for example. You set a field name is greater than equal to something or equal to something or not equal to something. Any of those combinations. You can also use multiple criteria. We use an and or an or. But remember, when you're referring to text, you're going to have to use quoted strings around that text so that it will add in the quotes for you. Another nice little feature, which I'm going to show you quickly, which adds onto this, is a part of the field, which I'm going to put in the width. Before we do the filter, I want to show you something called a TBLCD, because we don't have to put the DM anymore, dot record count, which is a number which tells you how many records there are in the table. Now, if I show message and I show the record count, now that's an integer. So if we're going to use it in a show message, we must convert it from an int to a string. If we're going to do that, do you notice that we're doing this record count before we even do the filter? So when I run it, 
and I click on there, it tells me that there are 250 records in the database. And then it did the filter, which had nothing in it. So if I type in Muse and then click on it, it does exactly the same thing. Or well, in that case, there was no records because the filter was on. Okay, so what I want you to take note of is if that record count tells you how many records are currently in the database or what is being viewed, if I do this after we do the filter, it will show me how many records are in that filter. So if you ever want to know how many records are in that filter or how many results are going to be returned, because that record count is being shown after the filter, it will only tell me how many records are being viewed in the ADO table. So there you can see there's three because there are three mews. If I typed in stained, there are four records. So if you want to access how many fields there are in the table, you can use the record count, but if there's a filter, you can use the record count again to see how many fields there are in that filter. For more videos on Delphi and databases, as well as other Delphi topics, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel where we have all our videos there. You can subscribe, you can even go to Facebook and Twitter and to our website to get more information. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.